Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest gruesome and grotesque video. Thought I would mix another one of these in here while I'm continuing with your Urban Legends video. So thank you so much for the suggestions on the Urban Legends side, please keep them coming. This one was actually another suggestion in one of my other gruesome and grotesque videos. So in looking at the information for it, I thought as a special treat, I would do it for you here. Uh, it seems like a lot of you really, really like this series, especially uh, with my last one that seems to be growing so much in popularity so thank you so much everyone for your viewership this one has to do with multiple instances not just one person in this case but multiple instances so i thought i would talk about the subject matter itself and in this case it has to do with a notorious location there in paris that you can visit to this day most of it though is hidden from the public there's a whole point behind that but some of it is still open and even then looking at that information or looking at that location, it's absolutely amazing to wonder what's underneath Paris. And it has to do with this. It's basically the subject matter of being lost in the catacombs of Paris. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the fascinating info associated with this phenomenon because it has happened to several people and apparently continues to happen to this very day. So that's why I've wanted to feature it here in this Christmas Grotesque video because the idea of being lost within hundreds of miles of, of darkness and endless tunnels that you'll never get out of, that to me just seems so gruesome. So let's go ahead and let's talk about that here. And I'll start first with just a brief history on the catacombs of Paris. There's a lot of rich info associated with the catacombs. Um, it's out there on the internet. So if you truly want to see and hear all the history for it, like a detailed history, uh, it's out there. But long story short, it was started in the late 1700s as a way to take care of overpopulation, overflowing, in this case, of the cemeteries there in Paris. Who knew? But there were apparently a lot and a lot of cemeteries above ground in Paris before this happened. So somewhere around 1786, there was a cemetery eliminating measure that started, and that eventually led to these catacombs of Paris. These catacombs are not small by any definition whatsoever. Uh, and when I mentioned that they go hundreds of of, of miles long, they do. They go absolutely that length. They pretty much wrap themselves around an intricate number of tunnels, endless almost tunnels of networks, all surrounding underneath Paris. You can go there to this day, and these tunnels are pretty much still there as is from the day that they were created. And shortly during that time period in the late 1700s, millions and millions of bodies were placed within these catacombs to again take care of the overflowing cemetery problem. And you're gonna see pictures throughout this entire video about this. That's why this place is so infamous because when it was first discovered, it was almost like there was a lull after this place was for lack of a better term buried like that it was created it was filled uh, with millions of bodies in fact it's about two million but I've read another article that stated it's about closer to six million bodies there and then there was a lull where it's almost like everyone almost forgot about this location and then somewhere later on there was a, a period where all of a sudden people rediscovered it and it just continued to, to have its popularity in fact it wasn't until about the 1950s if I'm not mistaken that it was open to the public and even then, just a small, very small portion, I think something like two kilometers, is open to the public officially that you can visit to this day. So if you go there and you wanted to have an opportunity to see this fascinating location, because again, seeing all these endless bones, these endless skulls, and wondering, you know, each one of these skulls, each one of these bones belong to a person. Someone lived during this time period, and now they're just buried here within this crypt, and pretty much presumably for the rest of time, because unless something else happens there in Paris uh, that causes these bones to be moved somewhere else, they're pretty much going to stay there. They've been there now for several hundred years, and they'll continue to do so for who knows how long. So you can go there again to this day, and there are official tours, and then you'll be able to see this in person. And if I ever go to that location in Paris, that'll be a great opportunity. To, to, to see this fascinating place. Now, the main basis of this video, though, is getting lost within 
the catacombs of Paris. That's almost like an urban legend of sorts. Unfortunately, it's one that has happened in real life. So of the very, very small amount of network open to the public, the rest is closed. It's officially closed. In fact, it is illegal to go within all those other hundreds of miles of tunneled networks. Uh, if you do so and you get caught, and there are police, can you, if you can believe it, there's police that patrol those areas. I don't know how they do it, like how they manage all those hundreds of miles, but presumably they have found some way to do so. But if you get caught, then you get fined, and then you may, I don't I haven't heard of anything about as far as jail, but I imagine if it continues uh, consistently, then you will have that issue later on. But that's how serious they take it there. It's for your own safety, because getting lost in these tunnels means this. And this is why, again, I place this in this gruesome part here. Obviously, there's no light. There's no electricity, there's no sunshine, nothing absolutely underneath these tunnels. Unless you have your own source of light, if you get lost within these tunnels, then that's it. You're pretty much in pitch black darkness. Uh, who knows how far underground and you're doing this on your own because the whole point of getting lost is that you're on your own and there's no way to escape absolutely none at all can you believe that can you imagine that like imagine all of a sudden you have a flashlight you get lost you're thinking everything is good but the further you get down into these network of tunnels the further you get lost that's the whole tragic point of these catacombs because you try to get to one area and you're thinking to yourself if i take a step back i'll just find the area that i came from but then you realize that it suddenly looks different you know how the mind plays tricks on you and then you may face a fork in the road and you're wondering did i, did I go to the left or did i go to the right you make the wrong choice you continue onward and suddenly you realize you start getting even more lost then you discover a new area that you haven't seen before and some areas there within the tunnels are blocked um, and not only blocked but some are also flooded so you definitely realize you didn't come from there and then all and you suddenly panic starts to come in. The idea then is, okay, this is no longer a joke. No one's going to find me. I'm going to get lost, and I'm going to get lost forever. That would definitely terrify me. The whole idea is at the beginning, everything is fine, but slowly but surely you start getting in a panicky mode, and then things just take over. After all of a sudden, pandemonium takes over, and then you start realizing uh, you start going crazy after a certain point. Uh, and then, of course, the flashlight goes off. It only has enough power to do so, and you have to use that power indefinitely. You cannot stop using it, otherwise you'll be in pitch black darkness. So that's another twisted angle with regards to getting lost there in the catacombs. Unless you have bags and bags of batteries ready with you when it comes to your flashlight, eventually your flashlight is going to run out. And when that happens, then you're lost and then there's nothing you can do. You can scream, you can yell, you can try to get help, but you are underground, you are miles and miles away from other people. There is no way to do so. And then finally, when the flashlight is gone and the light is gone completely, now you're in pitch black darkness. Now you can just feel everything around you to try to find some way out. And of course, there's no hope whatsoever. Can you imagine that? Like what a frightening way to have that happen. I mean, there was that John Jones video that I just made uh, that, that, that gained a lot of popularity about that, that poor guy, of course, that got stuck in the cave. This, though, is something close to that. I mean, imagine something like this happening, and then that's why you have all these measures to protect people from not getting lost in those caves. So again, if you go to those locations, the catacombs of Paris, you obviously have the main route, like when it comes to the public route, but then you have all these people going and doing it the illegal way. In fact, it is so much so that there's a term for it. It's known as a cataphile. So if you're a cataphile, then you're basically what's called an urban explorer who illegally tours these mines. And apparently there are tours for them, illegal tours, but there are tours. You can sign up, you can get these people that know these tunnels, like they've either created some kind of map for it or they've gotten a map from elsewhere, but they're able to take you to places that are cordoned off, that are obviously restricted, 
and then show you there uh, to those places. And then the idea is people stay. They actually stay within these catacombs, not just for a day, but for several days, and in some cases, even up to a week. You can pay and you can stay there. It's almost like staying in a hotel, except of course, it's underneath uh, the, these tunnels with surrounded by millions and millions of bones. And people have set up shop there, like they've set up theaters. Police have discovered that there was a theater in one case. There was a bar as well. There were sleeping court. Uh, uh, accommodations to all of this stuff happening within those catacombs fascinating no the idea that this stuff exists and that people that voluntarily will do something like that i of course will never do that because i have an extreme phobia when it comes to anything like that like pitch black darkness along with having uh like being trapped on the ground when it comes to these tunnels so that'll never never happen but people actively do so if you want to take things even to another twist the people there will also create their own tunnels to try to get as you know try to squeeze through as tight as possible into another part of the network so if you're not breathing hard now imagine that imagine uh, getting in this place that's already as tight as it is and then making your own makeshift tunnels so that way you can get to other areas and making them super tight so that way you can get through and then what if it collapses so that's a whole other world when it comes to this but there have been examples of people getting lost in fact there was a story as recent as 2017 two teenagers one of them 16 and 17 were lost within the tunnels for three days. Who knows how they got there? Uh, the stories I was looking up didn't give too much details, but presumably they went through uh, one of the illegal entrances. I mentioned that presumably because the uh, curator for this place, the place that is open to the public, has stated that ever since it was open in the 50s, the public area that you can visit, no one has ever gotten lost from. But, of course, the whole idea is people are going in the illegal routes, and when that happens, that's where they're getting lost, and that's what happened to these two teenagers. They got lost for three whole days. Luckily, they were found and the only reason they were found was because of a dog the police used in this case uh, uh those dogs those uh canine sniffing dogs that found these kids and they were able to take them out they were uh severely though uh they had hypothermia in other words so they were severely sick from being lost for three days but nonetheless they were rescued and they were very very fortunate for something like that to happen uh there was another story apparently i don't know though if this is true this seems to be more along the lines of an urban legend someone please point me in the comments how true this is but there was like a video that was found and in the, it showed the last few moments of a guy who got lost somewhere in like 2000 mid 2000s something like that and then that way he was trying to see and document these mines for himself but he of course ended up getting lost and so when that happened then he was able to uh, document everything but it showed him in his panicky mode getting more and more uh like for like a better term insane like it, it pretty much caused him uh, this experience to have that happen so i don't know though i couldn't find more information on it i think it's more on the urban legend side like this is something where no one really has any concrete info it's just gained a little bit of a tale on its own but someone please point that out but there's another one that's more on the tragic turn i don't know how true this is either but I found this story as well, looking it online. Apparently in 2005, January 1st, there was a, a teen, a girl by the name of Masha, who was celebrating New Year's Eve there uh, in, in Paris. And then she decided to go with her group into the catacombs. But unfortunately, she ended up getting lost. And when that happened, she was found three days later dead, like she had died of dehydration. And when that happened, um, it was apparently she was found pretty close to the exit of the catacombs which makes it all the more tragic but still if this is true three days in other words a pitch black darkness wandering around uh drunk at first but then suddenly realizing afterward the seriousness of her situation no doubt she was probably screaming out of her mind at one point trying to make sure that people had heard her but nobody ever did and so when uh, if you could just imagine three days of that and then finally succumbing to her uh, dehydration what a horrible horrible way to go but that's pretty much it uh, there's some of the brief info that stood out when it comes to getting lost there in the catacombs of Paris anyone ever been there
to the catacombs themselves? If so, uh, please post your comments. I would love to hear and, and everyone else too about your experience there. What's it, what it's like, in other words, what is it like going under there and then seeing all this, all this stuff there? I haven't even touched about the idea of, of, of having hauntings, like having ghosts and spirits, because when you're dealing with two to six million bodies, um, a lot of them probably you know, not not having, uh, you know, not having their last moments, not being the most pleasant of things that creates a residual haunting. I'm wondering how many of these poor souls are there haunting that location. That's another thing too. Like if you could imagine being lost down there and you start hearing noises, you start hearing moans, you start hearing uh, the usual sound associated with ghosts that are trying to make their presence known and there's nothing you can do about it. So if anyone has ever been down there before, please, I'd love to hear what your experience is like. So... All right, everybody. Thanks again, as always. Take care.